Today I'm going to show you the real way to install floating shelves, not the wobbly way that you've seen in other videos. The biggest problem with floating shelves is that they start to wobble after you use them for a short period of time, and the reason for this is because you install the brackets on the outside of sheetrock. Sheetrock is soft. So after a while, after a little bit of movement and setting stuff on these shelves, you'll start to have a softening spot and they'll continue to wobble. In this video, I'm going to show you the right way to install these brackets. It does take a little bit more effort than if you were to just install it the other way that you've seen it in other videos, or really, the brackets that I bought for this on Amazon, the pictures have it where you install them on top of the sheetrock, and that's just not what we're gonna do. So let's head on over to the video, follow along, let's go. The first step is to do what I've done here. Mark your studs using a stud finder like this guy here, and mark it with tape. So you can see these are about 16 inches apart, which is your typical stud width, 16 on center. But just go with this, boom. So I have my tape right there. So I know this is where my stud's gonna be. Then I measured my height of my bottom shelf. I'm not sure how high I'm gonna put the second one yet. That's all up to preference, but I'm gonna hang the first one first. Sheetrock is incredibly soft. So as this keeps pressing against that sheetrock, it's gonna start indenting it, and you're just gonna have a ton of problems. So we can't do that, especially with my shelves. I'm not hanging stuffed animals and a succulent on this. This is gonna hold dishes, glasses, coffee mugs, who knows what else. And this is all for an Airbnb property or short-term short rental property. So we're gonna have all kinds of tenants coming in and out of here. Some are gonna treat this place great and some just really aren't gonna care at all. Plus putting dishes on and off, on and off every single day is going to cause this to, if I were to apply to sheetrock, to eventually get to a wobbly state. So we're gonna get around that and it's really not that difficult. It may seem like a lot of extra tasks, but just follow along, let's do it. I'm placing my shelves 13 inches above this counter and then I'll place my bracket here and trace around it. Now with my multi-tool, I'll just cut it out. But you can really cut this out with a utility knife or a keyhole sheetrock saw or really even a flathead screwdriver and a hammer. And I landed fully on the stud just like I planned. I'm also installing this bracket vertical so both nail holes will attach to the stud. As you saw, this first hole here is a pretty tight fit, that's fine. The next hole that we do, I may only do two on this entire shelf. It's only like 30 inches long or so. On the next hole, I'm gonna need to make the hole a little bit bigger so I can move it up and down based off of the level because I need to make sure these two are level. So the other one will need a little bit of wiggle room, but I might even be able to kind of slip it behind the sheetrock if I do actually need wiggle room on there. So, but yeah, that's what we're dealing with. You can end up patching this up, but my board will cover this entire hole, so I probably won't myself. That's not going anywhere. Now this next part is quite important. You don't wanna just measure from the ground up or the ceiling down. You wanna make sure that your posts are level because you wanna make sure that your shelf is level. You also don't wanna measure from the bracket part of your hardware. You wanna measure the level from your post to post because you don't know how these things are made. Each one could be different. The cheaper you go, the more out of line they could be. You could get them custom made, you, you name it. The important part is the post, not the bracket. So we get it, set it on the other post that we installed, slip the bracket behind the level so the level will be resting on the post, and then get it level. There we are. And this is just temporary. Once we cut out the hole, we'll do this process again once we get the sheetrock out of the way. Okay, so I can actually move the bracket up and down behind the sheetrock. It's perfect. You want it to be able to go up and down. So let me get a couple screws. So again, I'm getting it level based off the pole to the pole 
not the bracket. Before I forget, if you like how this is looking, please smash that like button down below. It'll really help me out. Thanks. For the sake of this video and to save some time for you and me, I'm just gonna show you how to do this bottom shelf here, and then I'll quickly go and do the second, the top shelf here, without very much commentary. So that way you can get the gist of it, and then I can show you again more quickly how to do it. And so I'm gonna go outside, start messing with the lumber and getting that all prepped up so I can install it here. I measured the length I want my shelves to be and then applied some tape to where I'm going to cut. And this just helps make a cleaner cut. I'm using poplar here, which is quite popular. <laughs> it looks good, it's lighter than other woods, and is fairly cheap. Both shelves here cost about $60 total since this is a 10 inch wide board. But check out floating shelf prices online and you'll pay way more than that for some cheap junk. I'll start sanding with the block so I can take off some of the bigger splinters here. See, things like that would just eat up a sander, sandpaper. I'll first sand with 60 grit sandpaper and then come back with 120 or 240 grit for a smoother finish. I won't bore you too much with the sanding process on here, but once that's all done, I set the shelf onto the brackets and centered it on the wall where I wanted it to ultimately go. While up here, I can trace around the brackets to get the placement and depth of where I need to drill the holes. These are eight inch poles recessed into half inch sheetrock, so seven and a half inches or so of depth. So we do have a problem. I don't have all my tools with me. So this is the biggest half inch drill bit I have, the longest I should say along with this guy here. And I need to get way over here. So I'm gonna have to go to the store later this evening or tomorrow morning and get back on this later. But we can at least finish this up with some stain and clear coat and get this whole thing prepped. And I will go ahead and drill at least as far. So then I just need to come back and drill a little bit farther tomorrow. The next trick is drilling straight holes into this for the poles to go into. And you can't really just do that by hand. You'd be very lucky to get it to go straight on. So you can buy a jig, which is about $20. And I'll have a link down in the description of the one that I use. But again today, don't have all my tools. But this house that I bought had a little workshop under it. And in that workshop, he has this little piece here, which is basically a little hack. I don't know if he used this for that. But it's a hack to make a straight hole or keep your drill straight, basically. So let's see how it works. I'll begin by marking the center of where the hole will go and then measure one inch from there to get my center drill location. As for the drilling, I started off with a small drill bit, then a medium sized one, and then we'll ultimately finish up with a half inch drill bit. And the importance of this is it's easier to get a straight hole when starting off small. Next, I'm gonna use a scrap piece of poplar here to apply some stain on so I can see what it will look like ahead of time and I'm glad I did because I ended up switching what I thought I was gonna do. This is with pre-stain and this is without. I'm not sure how this got so dark and nothing else did. Very strange. I'm gonna go with the pre-stain though, although I like the light color, but it's so I don't know. I'm just going to go with this because this isn't bad. This looks good. If you're not sure why you should use pre-stain, check out my video linked up here in the right hand corner. It basically hides any blemishes and imperfections wood may have. What I've decided is I actually like the raw color of this wood. So I already put pre-stain on it, even though I'm not going to stain it. I'm just going to clear coat once this dries and use it as is because this is beautiful. Now I'll mount my top brackets here and you can see just how quickly this process is, even if I didn't fast frame it, maybe five minutes of real time.
I picked up my 12 inch drill bit and will now finish out these holes. There's a marking on them and I'll use that for my depth. Make sure you don't puncture through your shelf, obviously. My wife came up today and is helping clear coat these bad boys. We'll apply one coat, lightly sand, then apply a second coat, and maybe a third if needed. And while she's doing the clear coat there, I'll work on the holes for the second coat. The type of products I'm using for this project are down in the description of this video, by the way. This polyurethane is by Minwax and has a satin finish. We don't want too much shine on these natural looking boards. This last step is optional if you have two inch thick shelves, but I'll be using a mesh fiber tape and some drywall compound to fill in these holes around the brackets. I'll apply two coats of this stuff with sanding in between and then a couple of coats of paint. By the time I'm done with this, you won't ever know that these shelves weren't built when this house was originally built, and that is my goal. It was raining out and there's no central air system up on this mountain house so I guess my camera got a little haziness going on but I'm just painting around the brackets and using extremely soft brush strokes with a new brush so you will never be able to see the lines in my spot painting. The very last step here is to push these shelves on. I am not using epoxy to hold mine in place. The friction from the dishes will hold this on plenty. Use a dot of epoxy on your rods if you would like, but please do not go overboard because you will never be able to get them off and you'll have to cut through the rods in the future. Although these are meant to last forever. These are also held on by the fact that two poles will never be perfectly protruding. They can be manufactured a millimeter off. The studs can be slightly twisted when you mount the brackets. You may screw in one screw harder than the other. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Those poles will rub and be snug against the holes in the wood. And that's all it takes to install these floating shelves. It looks like a daunting task, but really it's not. You just need to fasten the brackets to your studs and you don't even necessarily need to cover those brackets up if you have a thick piece of wood like this here. This is actually two inches. When you buy a two by something at the store, it's really one and a half. This is really two inches. It'll hide the entire bracket. I just went above and beyond to conceal everything here. So this turned out great. There's no wobble in this at all. All these dishes are being supported on it. There's only two brackets. I could have added a third one, but there's no need when you do it with this method. If you're interested in any of these products that I use here, they actually all came off of Amazon. So if you like this video and you wanna support me and you wanna purchase something like this, I have the Amazon links down in the description below. I get a tiny little slice of their profit at no extra cost to you, um, but it all adds up for me. So head on down there, check that out. Please hit that like button. Subscribe to see more content like this. What else? I guess that's it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.